I mean, she was trying to kill me, right? I just... I didn't know what else to do, okay? What if she'd have gone after you? You'd all have done the same thing in my shoes! Let's start off this list with the most cruel and heartless person in all of Danganronpa, Junko Inoshima. Junko, as the mastermind and true main antagonist of all killing games, had zero regrets and zero remorse for any murder that happened because of her actions. She went so far to even killing her own sister just for her own profit by cruelly impaling her. She ranks at the bottom of this list. A monster with no remorse, no feelings, and no empathy. Next up we have Sumugi, who killed Rentaro in cold blood to continue the killing game, going so far to use a secret pathway and frame an innocent person. Smiling and proud she retreats after stealing Rentaro's items, the items that were the only hope that the students had to prevent any more murders. She did everything she could to continue her plan for an audience that doesn't even care if she died. The third girl in a row. However, this is not a mastermind, but an actual devil spawn who killed Yufumi in order to escape with the prize money, explicitly stating that she would kill everyone if that would mean she could escape. No joke, what about living in harmony and making the best of things and all that That noise? was bullshit! You idiots don't know the first thing about desperate! I'd have moved on all of you to get out of this room and holiday! Framing a fellow classmate for no no assault and inciting an other classmate to commit murder just to murder that same classmate later on. Next, we have a traumatized and a mentally ill man who got groomed and abused by his sister into developing a schizophrenic sister complex, who killed two girls in cold blood not to escape but to indulge his schizophrenic sister complex. One of those murders was not even planned, but more to cover up loose ends. After making what could have been an unsolvable murder, he murdered again, because he did not want to waste the effort he put in his original murder plan, and just because he could. Like the murderer before, this girl murdered two girls in cold blood for a girl that doesn't even live anymore. She was brainwashed, abused, neglected, and killed a defenseless girl who wasn't even conscious. And after that, a fragile girl who relentlessly bullied her. Next up we have Hufumi, who murdered Taka thinking he no no assaulted Celestia. In reality, this was all a lie and part of Celestia's plan to complicate a murder by baiting Hifumi into killing someone. Hifumi did not know about his ulterior and malicious motive of Celestia, so he almost had zero regrets into killing a fellow classmate. Tool or person? Pekko murdered a classmate to make her master escape by identifying as an emotionless tool used by Fuihiko making have her no regrets until Fuyika scolded her, realizing that what she did was wrong, regretting her murder and finally realizing that she will never be with Fuyiko again. Kirumi, however, killed her victim in agreement. After serving and helping her classmates, she had to weigh the lives of her friends against the lives of the entire nation. She did it for the greater good. By sacrificing a few, she could save many. Did it hurt to sacrifice? Yes, but in the end, she did what she had to do. Gundam stands at the middle of this list. The person with the most survival instinct. The person who understood better than everyone else that life and death is a balance you cannot control. Knew that sacrificing someone was essential for everyone's survival. He chose the strongest opponent to give himself and to sacrifice a fair fight. He killed Nekomaru in a fair and honorable fight. He did not have any regrets, but he had no choice. Would he rather have wanted to make things go another way? Yes. Sakura killed herself to prevent the next murder while wanting to protect her friends. She knew that killing herself was necessary to protect everyone. While regretting she could not be there anymore to protect them, her regrets were quickly faded knowing that with her death, no more murders would occur. However, Ter Ter tried to murder a would-be murderer to prevent a murder, but his ulterior motive was to escape and go back to his mother. 
While his motive is a realistic and understandable one, he accidentally killed Byakuya, the most capable person in the group, and he was genuinely regretting his actions. Chiaki was caught in a forced murder. She was unaware she murdered Nagito. She regretted murdering but knew it had to be done in the end for the greater good. For that she gladly gave up her life to make the remaining 5 survivors end the killing game. Leon murdered Sayaka out of self-defense but with mixed reasons. He tried to kill her because she would either come after someone else afterwards, she could ruin his reputation or even worse she could come after him again. Leon was in a tough spot, so he chose to murder her. But he realized that murdering her was not the right decision in the end. He didn't want to murder her, especially after realizing that all his friends would die as well in the progress. He was just a scared, hopeless boy in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mondo murdered Chihiro in a blind rage and did everything he could to cover up his secret. He did not even plan on murdering him. He did not even have murder on his mind. He regretted the exact moment he realized Chihiro would not be waking up anymore and felt extremely bitter throwing away his monopath. During the trial he did not even try to frame or pin the crime on anyone and was extremely outraged after finding out Bakayuka messed with Chihiro's corpse. The most kind-hearted person killed Miyu and regretted every single moment before, during and afterwards. He did it for the greater good, but would have rather sacrificed himself to protect everyone than take the life of someone else. The victim did try to kill someone else, so at the same time Kunta was protecting his classmate. Skipping the details, he suffered memory loss about the murder he committed. He was extremely distraught during the trial, feeling so guilty that he didn't even try to escape during his execution. He was strong enough to break out of the chains that were confining him, but he just didn't want to live anymore. On the second spot we have the hero of E3, Kaito, who was forced to kill Kokichi in a losing situation. Either Kokichi would die and Maki would be executed, or he would take Maki's place. So he regretfully killed Kokichi and sacrificed himself to protect the remaining students. He was trying his hardest to think of a way for everyone to live in the situation, but that's where his weakness lies. He is not realistic. Fortunately, and how cruel we may sound, Kokichi was realistic. He immediately came to terms with that either he or Maki had to go. Kokichi came up with a final last resort plan to end the killing game, and Kaito agreed. From drinking the antidote, to setting up the fake evidence, to dragging Kokichi and finally pressing the button, he was haunted. However, he bravely revealed himself at the end, to prevent his friends from dying. But on the number one spot, we have Kaede who attempted to murder the mastermind, but accidentally killed an innocent person in the progress. The realization that she killed someone innocent, that her plan failed, that the fact she betrayed everyone for one chance at ending the killing game had failed, must be a grievously shock for her. All the other characters had a reason, or at least whether it's planned or not, accidental force or out of free will targeted a specific person, but not Kaede. She did not plan on escaping on her own. She planned to save everyone and end the mastermind. When she realized Shuichi could not reach the truth, she revealed herself as the blackened and bravely sacrificed herself.